Amen. Well, good morning again, church. Take your Bibles and go with me, if you would, to John chapter 10, the Gospel of John, uh, or excuse me, according to John chapter 10, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, the, we're continuing in our series through uh, John's Gospel um, that, that we've titled Come and See. It's this idea of this great invitation that is given to all of mankind to come and see. Now, I want to be clear about something with you on the onset this morning. This is not a, an eternal invitation, meaning that um, you have all of eternity to come and see. It, 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 this invitation comes with a, a shelf life on it. For instance, if if your friends invited you over, uh, let's just say they catch you after um, church is over today and said, hey, we're cooking out tonight at the house. Y'all should come over and eat. L let me tell you something. If you show up at their house Wednesday night hungry, ready to eat, you missed the party. That wasn't deep. That wasn't even a trick. Amen. Amen but you know you missed the party. There is a shelf life on the invitation. Please hear me and hear me well. When Jesus offers to us this come and see invitation, there will be a time that that invitation is no longer any good. I thought y'all believed that. Amen, right? It will run smooth out. I hear people make a statement, and I think I know. I'm going to give some grace. I think I know what they're trying to say. I just wish they'd quit saying it. It's never too late to get saved. I, I, I think they're trying to say something good, but they're saying something that has great fallacy. Attached to it. No, it, it will be, ma'am or sir, too late to get saved one day. That's why the Bible declares, today is the day of salvation. Come to him while he is near, while he may be found. We flat will run out of time. And if you notice that we never die when we think we're going to. I don't know if you notice that or not, but it's always too young. I've been to some funerals of some folks in their 80s, and they just talk about, oh, I just didn't see it coming. Are you kidding me? It's coming. It's coming for you. It's coming for me. It's coming for everyone. You may die as a toddler, and you may die as a 130-year-old man or a woman, but it is coming. And the Bible says after that is appointed unto man once to die, but after that is the judgment. That judgment will clearly depend upon, have I answered the invitation to come and see? To come and see. Well, that's not my message this morning. I told you I just had some stuff in me today. Look with me in chapter 10, verse, um, well, where you want to start? Um, 22. Let's start there in 22. That's a good place. And here's what we're talking about today. I'm talking about the shepherd and his sheep. The shepherd and his sheep. Now, it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. The Feast of Dedication is also known as the Feast of Lights, okay? Um, and Jesus had walked in the temple in Solomon's porch, and then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> Have you ever talked to somebody that you're talking, but they're not getting what you're saying? Every parent better be saying amen. Amen. It, it, it's like, how much plainer could I be? I said, don't run in the house. Well, does fast walking count, mama? Yes. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. You communicate. You're clear. You're crystal clear, but they, it just, they, how many of you know sometimes our kids at the elevator don't go to top floor, amen? It never, never makes it to the penthouse up there, right? Jesus has been unbelievably clear 
with this group of jokers that are challenging him at every front. They continue to challenge him at this. He's told them who he is and listen to their statement here again. How long do you keep us in doubt? If you're the Christ, just say it plain. Okay, here it is, plain. Well, no, no, say it plainer. Okay, here's plainer. Now say it the plainest. All right, this is the plainest it can get and they don't get it. Well, we're gonna find out why. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, here it is, because you are not of my sheep. And I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Lord, in the name of Jesus, speak to us in these next moments. Help us to respond to you in a way that would give honor and glory to you alone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I, I'm, I'm, if you'll, if you'll kind of just lean forward a little bit, just kind of be a little bit bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, say amen once in a while, we're going to be quick today and get you out of here to go eat a biscuit. Can I have a witness? Amen. All right, because I've got three, three little statements that I want, I want to mention to you so it can't take long about the shepherd and his sheep, okay? The shepherd and his sheep. First of all, I want you to notice what he said about the activity of the sheep. If you're going to be a sheep, you need to do sheep things. Amen? That wasn't tricky. That was You got to do sheep things. As a matter of fact, say it this way. If you are a sheep and bark like a dog, you're weird. You, you need to be in a circus, not in a church. Amen? If you are a sheep and you oink like a pig, something went wrong that probably ain't going to get fixed. If you are a sheep, you do sheep stuff. <laughs> Let me translate that. Sometimes that means dumb stuff. I don't know if you've been around sheep very much, but I, they're dumb. They're dumb critters. They stink. They're ain't, I mean, they're just, they're, they're, here's another word for them. They're pitiful. They're pitiful critters. They're, they're, just, they're just awful. They, 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 they can't feed themselves. They, they can't just go out and find food. They, they, they can't protect themselves. They have no protective. They, I mean, you've you never heard of man mauled by sheep. Now, they can bite you, but that, that's, that's about all. You, you've never heard of local family dog uh, sent on to dog glory because a tack sheep, rabid sheep, got after it. They, they don't have that. Yet, yet, yet sheep are so helpless, defenseless, and, 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 and pitiful they can lay down, I've taught you this before, they, you, they can lay down on their back if their back gets downhill a little bit because of the water content in their system, they flat can't get up. I relate with that. Amen. Is there anybody in here this morning relate with that? They can't get up. It's called a cast sheep. That's what the term of that is, a cast sheep. They literally get down. They, 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 it starts out real innocent, okay? They, I'm not going to do it. I won't get up. I was, I was fit to do it. I really was. But I won't, have, I won't be able to. I'd have to get you up here. Anyway, do you want to come? We won't do it today. They, they lay down, and all the water in their system goes to their spine, and they just they get like, they like, I guess I was going to say top heavy. They get bottom heavy and they, they can't get themselves up. And here, here's what happened to them. They lay there and die. 
lay there and die. Why? You ready? They're pitiful. They're helpless. They are wholly, completely dependent upon the shepherd. The shepherd. These men, these knotheads that are challenging Jesus, just get clear with us. Okay, one more time, I will. So Jesus indulges them. And he tells them, here's why when I talk to you, you don't understand. Here's why when I talk to you, 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 you don't adhere. Here's why when I talk to you, you reject the, the very truth that I've given you because you've rejected my father and you're not my sheep. Now, we get into some technical stuff that I don't have time to get into because remember I told you I'm going to give you a shorty today. Amen? We can go a long version if y'all want to. Amen. We can break this down. There's some technicalities to this that I just, again, we're, we, we, I mean, we'll get in deep because here's, here's what happens. You get into a thing called election, okay? Now, I know that if we got any Calvinists in the room, you're like, oh, dear God, thank you. Thank you for getting into that. I'm not getting into that today, okay? Uh, but but, but, but it, it's, it's a component here. All right. There's a component of this that 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 deals with these this doctrine of election. Because here's here's a truth. A truth is from eternity past, God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit knew every single person that would ever be born again. He knew that. By the way, if he didn't, if that bothers you, you've got too small of a God. Because the God that my Bible describes is a God who is omniscient, has all knowledge. I know some of y'all think you have that. You do not. You do not. He has all knowledge. Now, here, can I, can I insert some mystery? Everybody likes a good mystery, don't they? A little, little mystery of the gospel. Did you know that even though he knew that, it still requires something from us? Did you know that? You see, you have on one hand the sovereignty of God who knows all things. He knows who the elect are. He knows who's going to be saved. We don't, by the way. But then you have on this other mountain here this thing called the free will of man. In other words, that, that there's a responsibility that you and I have when the Father calls that we respond with our free will to his invitation to come and see. If we do not respond, then guess what? We spend eternity separated from God. That's how that works. You say, explain it. I can't. It's a mystery. There's, there's parts of this we can't explain. Spurgeon had this greatest quote on this that I've ever heard. They said, well, how, Dr. Spurgeon, do you reconcile the sovereignty of God and the free will of man? He said, you don't have to reconcile friends. Some of y'all going to wrestle with that a little while. That means they're not competing against each other. That means that they're, they're, they're both true. Is it the sovereignty of God or free will of man? Yeah. Absolutely it is. It, it, there's both there. And you say, why did you, why'd you get into all that? Because this is part of what's going on here. They, they don't have an understanding. They, they, how many of you know that when you got saved, your understanding of God went from a zero to a thousand, like instantly? There, there's, a, there's, this, there, there's this thing called revelation. There's this thing called understanding. How many of you, before you were saved, tried to read your Bible and it was like trying to read a recipe for a bunt cake in Swahili? Amen. Them were some bad cakes, weren't they? But all of a sudden, whenever you get saved, all of a sudden, it just begins to come alive. I'm reading the same Bible that I was reading a month ago, and now all, it's given life to me. Now, all of a sudden, it's bringing this new energy in me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What's happening? It, it's, it's the revelation of the Spirit of God in us. He is telling them. See, y'all made me get into stuff I wasn't going to. He's telling them 
the reason y'all are a bunch of ignoramuses. He said, I, I bore witness of my father you didn't believe. Because you didn't believe, you're not my sheep. By the way, I, the word believe is not merely an academic exercise. The word believe is so much bigger than just, oh yeah, I, I know what's going to happen. The word believe, it, is, it, it comes with this notion that I've, I've affixed myself to that truth and my, my everything will prove that I believe that. Y'all get what I'm saying? In other words, I believe that the, 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 the water, this ice water is cold, therefore I won't jump in. And so I don't jump in. Why? Because I'm going to freeze to death. I believe that it's raining outside, so therefore I, I put something over me to keep from getting soaked. My actions are proving that I believe that something is happening. When you believe he is the son of God and you believe that he is the only hope for the world and you believe that he is offering to you and I redemption, biblically, if you believe it, your life tells the story. Y'all hear what I just said? Your life tells the story. I didn't just preach perfection on you. I didn't just preach that you'd never sin again. That's not what I said. I said your life would tell that you really believe what it is that you're saying you believe. Now come in here. I told you we're talking about what? The activity of the sheep. Jesus said something that absolutely has wrecked me this week. He said, verse 27, my sheep, my sheep, that's possessive, hear my voice. And he said, I know them, but listen to it. And they follow me. They follow me. Okay, break that down. All right, here it is. You ready? You ain't gonna like this. If you're not following, you're not his. Y'all hearing me? If you're not following, you're not his. Now, let, 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 hang on, hang on. Before you get crazy, some of you, I can tell you already, I was in Baptist church. I didn't say you have to follow to become his. I said, if you're not following, you're not his. Y'all get that? We, we don't do something to get something. It, we get something, and as a result of what we've got, we do. It's complete opposite of what the world would say. The world wants to say, have you seen me? Have you, have you noticed what I've done? Have you seen my accomplishment? Like we've got a, 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 a punch sheet that says, here, look at all that I've done. I've been good to my neighbor, been sweet to my wife. I've, amen, sweetie, it was a good aim. And spot. I've, I've done all these things. I've got this, this long list, all this stuff I've done. That's what we want. That's not how salvation works. We talked about this in my small group this morning. Man, it was encouraging because this is this is the, the this is part of what our, even our culture in Americana brings to us that that it's just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, earn your own way, be your own man. That may work great trying to achieve the American dream. It will put you in hell for eternity trying to earn heaven. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Dear ones, we, we've got to stop, full stop, trying to create this, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be very cautious in my words, this, this, Second class of Christian. We got to stop that mess. We are hurting the very mission of the church by coming up and, and creating this, this, this second class of Christian. Oh, what do you mean by second class of Christian? We're all the same class. No, 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 you're, you're not getting what I'm saying. In God's eyes, as a follower of Jesus, we're all the same. There's, there's not good, there's not 
some good. No, 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 no. We all get the same grace offered to us. You don't get more of it than I get. But my entire life being in church, I've, I've watched this take place. And can I just tell you, I'm, I'm as grieved in this very moment of my life as I've ever been grieved about this issue. How we take people whose very life denies God. And we try to somehow, because we love them, excuse that and say, no, they're, they're Christian. They're, 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 they're okay. They're, they're on the rolls of a church somewhere. I remember that whenever they were baptized. I remember, uh, or maybe they haven't been baptized. I, I remember whenever they did this. And, and what will come up with some Christian activity. And say, no, they're, they're good. They're good. Listen to me. The, the Bible declares there is none good. There's none righteous. No, not one. If there were righteousness among us, then we wouldn't need Christ. We are bankrupt, y'all, apart from him. But as a result of what he's given us, if you are born again, you don't hide that. You don't suppress that. You embrace that. Listen to his words. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. Ma'am or sir, let me beg of you. Let me appeal to you this morning. If you have a loved one in your life, and this is who we typically do. Have you ever noticed it's people that we don't like, we don't make those kind of excuses for? You ever notice that? That neighbor that's under your skin, you, you never make excuses for him, do you? That, 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 that employee that just drives you nuts, you don't make excuses for her, do you? That, that, that boss, you don't make excuses for her or him, do you? You, you never do that. Those ones that aggravate you, but somehow your family, your friends, your co-workers, the ones that you love, the ones that are precious to you, we start hunting for some Christian activity somewhere to say, oh, they're all right. They're all right. Can I tell you, every time you're doing that, you're helping them towards hell just a little bit more. Now, I, I get it, what I'm saying. That's, our culture, that's harsh. I understand that. I, I, you can take it that way. Please understand, I'm not giving it that way. I'm giving that to you because I flat love you. I'm telling you that because I don't want a single one of you to step off into a Christless eternity thinking because I've been religious. I've got some religious activity in my life. I've denied God. My life is, but I've been real. I've done some religious things. I'm in church here this morning, right? That ought to count for something. It will count for nothing in eternity if you've not trusted in Jesus as Savior. Nothing. I can't tell you how many funerals I've gone to. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds where seems like only good people die. Y'all know what I'm, it's quiet, I understand. But y'all know what I'm saying is truth. Only good people die. And they're all saved. Isn't that interesting? They're all saved. Now, again, I don't think we ought to get up and say, well, they're in hell. That, no, not at all, because I don't know if they're in hell. I don't know who's going to heaven and who's going to hell. That's not my job. Let me tell you what is my job. Let me tell you what is your job. We've got to be clear with people. To put your faith and your trust in Christ is not to hang on to this old life and then get a foot in heaven and somehow get the best of both worlds. No, it is that we die to self. We die to sin. We embrace the Father. We embrace the Son filled with the Spirit. He is the only hope. He's my life now. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me, period. Follow me. By the way, I got my crud. 
Can you guys listen quicker? Good night, my time's gone. Hey, listen, <laughs> I really thought we were gonna be done in about 10 minutes. Okay. The second one is the eternality of the sheep. Look at what happens. Verse 28. After he said, here they, they follow me. Here's what he said. He said, and I give them, well, I like those two words, don't you? Eternal life. Isn't that good? I give them. Not they earn. Not they found. I give them eternal life. And, and, hang on, hang on. They shall never perish. They shall never perish. Isn't that good? Any, any, anybody, even Baptist people excited about that? I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. He said, we're going to live forever with him. Why? Because we were good? Because we're religious? No, because he's God, he's good, he died, he arose, and we repented and trusted in him. Not because you're a good person, not because you were sweet to your mama. By the way, you ought to be sweet to your mama. Not because you had a kind soul. Not because you were good in athletics. Not because you knew how to run your business right. But you trusted in him. The eternality of the sheep is he gives them eternal life and they shall never perish. Let me give you this last one. And I think it's the best one. I want you to notice the dependability of the shepherd. Second half of that verse, we were just in verse 28. Neither shall anyone snatch, the, that's a good word, snatch them. Snatch them out of my hand. No one will snatch them out of their hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one's able to snatch them out of my father's hand. My father and I are one. Now, I saw something this week. I don't know how I've missed this my whole life, but I've missed it. I've always quoted that. Jesus said that no one will snatch them out of my father's hand. Jesus said, you won't snatch them out of my hand first. We're, we're, we're double snatchless. That was pretty good, wasn't it? I thought that right there in the moment. Yeah, man. <laughs> you like that? Tweet that. Yeah, <laughs> we, <laughs> we're given a promise that God the Father and God the Son got a hold of us as his sheep and no one will snatch you out my hand. We were talking about this in my office this morning. Um, um, usually Sunday morning, Pastor Seth comes in, Pastor Brooks drop by and see him, and we're usually talking about stupid stuff. Sometimes we'll get spiritual, and we did this morning. We got talking about some, about some stuff in this text. And um, we said we, we, we feel sorry and, and, and not in some haughty, arrogant way, but in, a, in a, a way of pity for those that are caught in this vicious circle of, oh, I lost my salvation. I got to go find it. Oh, I got it back, but now I lost it again. I got I to gotta go get it again. As though somehow... You never earned it to start with. Because here, let me just say this. Maybe this will be clear. If you've got to earn it a second time, you better have earned it the first time. Well, guess what? You didn't. <laughs> you don't want what you earned. Why? Because the Bible says the wages, what you've earned is death. I, I, I hate it for them because they're in this perpetual state of fear. 
perpetual state of, of a lack of peace in their life. I know them, you know them. They're constantly, oh, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know. Well, why? Oh, I cussed yesterday. I'm in trouble. Y'all hear me? Because y'all start listing off your sins, and I'm like, oh, I've done that. Amen, I'm in trouble. I know some of you are like, <gasps> you have, you've sinned. Yeah, isn't that weird? Like I'm human or something. Almost like y'all. I got the same stinking struggles y'all got. If, if, if I were to go in and out of my salvation, every time I had a bad thought, every time I said a bad word, every time I was mean, every time, well, I'm rarely ever mean, but uh, every time, sweetie, help me. Every time I did something sinful, I'm tell, I'd be the biggest basket case there was in the room. Well, preacher, what holds you together? I'm glad you said it because we're going to end right there. The fact that my security is in the highest one. The highest one. There's not a God greater. If there were a God greater, then I'd be scared about, okay, I know you said that nobody going to snatch me up, but he bigger, he could, you know, he could snatch me. Because this idea of snatching is like it just come out of nowhere. It's like a, 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 a mama that's walking through Walmart and that little toddler starts wandering off. You snatch them up. Yeah, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Or they're about ready to fall off uh, of, of the, the couch and they shouldn't have been on the couch. Or the, snatch them up. He said, ain't nobody snatching you. There ain't nobody catching me off guard. Why? Because I got my eye on you. You're in my hand. You're, you're secure. I don't know who needs that. Maybe I'm just preaching to me this morning. But I'm thankful this morning I'm secure. Even on my bad days, maybe especially on my bad days, when I don't, yes, I'm trying to quit. You ever not feel saved? Yet you know you are. That's the greatest gift in the world because my salvation isn't based on my death. It's based on his, based on his. Activity of the sheep, they follow. Eternality of his sheep, eternal life never perish. Dependability of the shepherd, no one snatches my sheep you're secure